Dr. Christopher Liu, welcome to the Talk To Me Doc podcast. Good morning, Andrew. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be on the show. Well, likewise, we're happy to have someone as accomplished as you. Uh, I've already recorded a little intro about you, but in your own words, could you tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a physician, entrepreneur, investor, TEDx speaker this coming October, and also a digital health consultant. Um, I grew up in Houston, went to Baylor for medical school, was part of the MD-PhD program, and during my medical school years, I started two companies investing in real estate and stocks and grew those companies towards the my senior year I was I had achieved financial freedom and uh, independence uh, however I was uh, you know I was strongly encouraged to pursue the traditional route so I matched into orthopedic surgery in 2007 at Rutgers University uh, but wasn't really happy and fulfilled so I at the height of the financial crisis I devoted myself full-time to my two companies and grew them to the point where I became a millionaire in my mid-30s and was able to take a year off um, in 2016 before launching my uh, consulting company. Um, so far, I've written four books on financial freedom and independence. Uh, also uh, scheduled to be a TEDx speaker this October. I launched my on di online digital program this month and um, also creator of the uh, private Facebook group, Financial Freedom for Physicians. So I'm really passionate about um, speaking out against um, the abuses uh, towards physicians these days and uh, just teaching physicians how to get right with their finances so that they don't have to, um, so that when it comes time, they, can, they have options. Um, you know, if they're not happy in their careers, they can easily pivot and switch without being, you know, tied to anything. Wow, that's pretty a pretty incredible story. I think. Uh, I mean, weren't you terrified to just leave residency? Yeah, um, it was actually uh, it was actually uh, that the day that I um, turned in my keys, badge, and pager. I left the hospital, and I can just remember I had butterflies in my stomach. Um, you know, I had palpitations. I had, you know I had shortness of breath, and really it was it was the fear, but it was also the excitement. I was like, I just you know because. Actually, I had I started having inklings of leaving medicine during my second year of medical school, but um, you know I was strongly encouraged to tough it out. You know, um, you know my advisors and mentors they all said it was this was just a phase, um, but uh, you know uh, really this the, you know the decision in two thousand and eight was started back in two thousand and two, and but I just I had a lot of fear and I had a lot of pressure. And, um, you know, it's almost like skydiving where you just, you have to take the leap and um, know that everything will work out and turn out uh, well in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, well, given current events, uh, there's certainly a lot more docs that are thinking about jumping ship, but uh, really either don't know how to do it or are, are too scared to, to make that leap. What kind of advice would you give to those physicians? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think, uh, you know, starting off just, you know, low, low cost things, you know, very, a lot of free things like um, joining Facebook groups. Um, I have my own private Facebook group. It's free to join. Um, listening to a lot of, a lot of physicians are starting their own podcasts about financial freedom and, you know, career changes, career transitions. All of those are free. You know, there's tons of, resources on the internet um, the the next step is uh, online programs so I know like uh, Jim Dolly from white coat investor um, Peter Kim from passive income they they have these uh, online programs you know they're fairly inexpensive to join so you can do that the next level is going to you know seminars and um, conferences and networking with like-minded physicians looking for alternative sources of income. So there's, um, for me, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been to the SEAT conference uh, that, that really helped me. Um, and I was a speaker there um, two years ago. Uh, and just go to different uh, conferences. The, the next level is um, start investing with um, a lot of physicians. They have their own programs. So 
you know, whether it's an hour or two, you know, it's that, that would be, um, money well spent because it'll, that hour or two, uh, will save you sometimes years of, uh, just struggle and toil. So definitely get a mentor, um, get educated, get a lot of resources, start reading a lot of books outside of medicine. Um, for example, um, the two books that really shaped my life were um, Getting Started in Options and also uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So, And um, another great book is uh, Multiple Streams of Income. So uh, just, you know, there's in, these, in this age, there's... Uh, a total a, a, a abundance of resources and knowledge. Um, the thing that separates those who create the lifestyle that they want and those that don't is those that just take action. So, you know, knowledge is there, but you also have to execute as well. Absolutely. And what do you say to docs that are just like, well, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, there's real estate, there's <laughs> stocks, there's starting their own business, there's all these different things, and they're just inundated with all the different <laughs> options and, and yeah. then don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, uh, I'll tell you my own personal story because uh, I started out in uh, stocks. So stocks was easy because all you had to do was open up a brokerage account and um, – while, while stocks was really like I'm interested in stocks but um, I, and I got my financial freedom from stocks um, it's not something that I could you know start a hedge fund over or be like um, the guys on CNBC who uh, you know talk about stocks all day um, I do love the fact that you know equities you're investing in companies and you're evaluating investments based on you know the paper assets so um and then i moved on into real estate and real estate there's aspects that i like and aspects that i don't like um but it was really just to teach me how to become a better investor and how to create systems and processes to automate a lot of things um but really my True passion was um, is in uh, digital content and uh, creating uh, online programs and courses to to educate and teach what I've known. So that that's but that's taken a, a lot more time because I, ha I had to build out my brand. I had to um, establish a reputation. You know, I had to create content and things. So start out. So start out small. Um, start looking into things. Uh, I mean, for example, stocks, all you have to do is, you know, put a, you know, set aside, you know, 50, 100 bucks every month and just do it that way. It's not going to get you your financial freedom, but it'll teach you um, the education, how to invest. And, and slowly as you, um, you tailor and hone what you like and dislike, you can start to focus on the areas and investments that you do like, um, you know, for for a lot of the non-entrepreneurial physicians, you know, you can pivot into the um, managerial administrative space. You can pivot within your company. You can take on uh, more of a non-clinical role. So there's really, I mean, in these age, there's so many different options. So just uh, what identify what your talents and your skill sets are and then um, just uh, start to branch out into different niches and things that, you know, interest you and excite you. And, and if you do it as a hobby first, it'll be le a lot less stressful than if you, you know, you have to do it because you have to earn an income. True. I mean, I think you got two groups of people. There's the, there's the docs that are just are, are done and want to do something else. And then there's some who just want to diversify their income streams and stay in medicine. So, yeah. I mean, we, we once thought that this was the ultimate job security, but I think the coronavirus has taught us that, uh, we're physicians are replaceable as well. Yeah. Um, so I think just, uh, some, if you want to stay in medicine, exploring some of these other options so that you have a, a fallback or a backup plan, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, it's like uh, it's almost like uh, in the past you had to what they call the diversifying assets. So you had to have like different asset classes. Now you have to um, diversify income streams. So um, you can't really depend on one single sole source of income. You know, you have to, um, for example, um, a dual income family. You know, you have real estate, you have stocks, you have you know savings and you have a side business all of these income streams will help you to become uh you you have to cr be able to create 
your job stability in today's um, society. There's no one job that's going to be stable for the rest of your life. So, no, absolutely, and I, mean, I think that's more and more evident these days. And so, what about uh, so, Dr. Julie? What about a, a doc that comes to you and says, "Hey, um, I don't have any money. I uh, I've got five hundred thousand dollars in debt." And uh, I, uh, I'm working paycheck to paycheck despite my high income. You know what can I do? Uh, yeah, that's. I I um, I've uh, I was recently I saw this one uh, Facebook um, post. I think it was this this guy. He said he was like uh, four hundred four hundred thousand dollars in debt, and he was starting his year of uh, residency. And like like um, well, I mean. My my advice is one don't get in that situation in the first place. So if you you know if you make financial wise financial decisions, you know you wouldn't be in that um, situation. But you know you have to make the best of what you can do from that situation. So um, you take um, you know you look at your income, how much you're making. You look at your expenses, and you know for example, if you're living a you know a large lifestyle, you know a very um, you know, you may have to start cutting back, um, you know, and just start um, being uh, frugal and start saving where you can. Uh, you know, the other thing is if you're able to, you know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, but, you know, you're, you're, you're doing well in your, your job and your company, then, you know, you may, that may buy you extra time. So, you know, if you're not miserable and you're doing well, that can give you extra time to, you um, to start educating, but at some point you have to look at um, your your um, your income and your expenses, and that's just going to be a personal financial choice and a financial decision. So where you can cut back, you know, um, really, I mean, like for example, you you can start a blog, you can start a podcast right now, um, you can start affiliates, and all those really don't take much money, but they you know they take a lot of time. So you can start learning that way as well. But, uh, I mean, the thing is you have to, you know, start making choices on, you know, where you're going to prioritize your, your, where you're going to spend things. So, yeah, I mean, that's solid advice for anyone, I think. Yeah. Um, the, as far as like real estate goes, I know we talk a lot about real estate. Um, are you, you know, given the current state of affairs, I think, is, is it dangerous to be a, to be a landlord right now? Yeah, that's a well. That's a good question. the The answer is yes and no. So, uh, uh, <laughs> that like with all things, you know, uh, um, I'll give you my own personal example. So, uh, for example, I had a uh, I have a lot of um, well, part part of my portfolio is um, focused on short term, like short term uh, rentals and things like that. So, for example. We know when this COVID uh, uh, crisis hit, um, I had a lot like my bookings. I had booked from um, you know March all the way up to I believe it was uh, July or April, and uh, you know like I had specifically targeted um, like medical students here for rotations. But then when um, the you know the travel ban and the hospital shutting down and the um, medical schools canceling rotations so I had all of those bookings you know just you know they had to cancel it but uh, the, but luckily what uh, I had established a good brand so you know because uh, I focused more on the experience for the customer so I was able to rebook a lot of the um, vacancies almost immediately but uh, like I said but for example a lot of uh, landlords you know they got where they depend on this rental income, you know, they're booked for the entire year and all of a sudden all that income vanishes, uh, you know, and a lot of them couldn't get rebooked. So it's, it, it in that sense, it is dangerous, right? The, the upside to that is, you know, and again, COVID is like a, COVID is like a black swan event. It's something that just happens, you know, once in a, you know, a century type thing. But uh, but these types of events are happening more and more. So that's why you have to diversify your assets and your income, and you also have to diversify your skill sets. Um, so in a normal situation, you you know you wouldn't have these sort of 
things happen, but uh, you know, it's just teaching you how to um, pivot and innovate. The the good thing about this is that um, in these times of crises, you can also um, innovate and establish new marketing plans and new uh, business ideas. So, for example, from this uh, from this crisis. You know, I started to diversify like, oh, what happened? You know, I started instead of just targeting medical students, I started to open it up to, you know, different types of travelers. OK, the second thing is um, in terms of dangerous like real estate, if you, for example, like uh, 2007, 2008. Yes, that's really dangerous because, you, you know, that's just a mania. That's, a you know, people just jumping in. And that's just like hype and speculation. But if you're able to evaluate an investment based on its core fundamentals. So you, you generate a high cash flow, a high uh, cash on cash return, that sort of thing. If you're not um, gambling on the appreciation, it's, a, it's more safe. But again, there's always risks with, um, with landlords. So for example, you know, tenants can, you know, damage your place. They can, you know, steal from you, you know, steal from your place. You know, they can fall down and, you know, sue you and things like that. So, you, have, you know, like I, like I said, you always have to, um, as an entrepreneur investor, you have to look at um, the risk and reward and, and learn how to mitigate that risk. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think a uh, common, uh, common advice is as long as you're, uh, place cash flows, you'll be okay as long as you're not betting on appreciation. But uh, I, uh, I think people didn't expect uh, uh, you know people to not be able to pay their rent all of a sudden, and yeah. uh, mortgages <laughs> come and do. But yeah, yeah, hopefully this will pass and we can move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's fair. So um, I want to just uh, transition the show a little bit to. Uh, get to know you as a guest a little bit more. Sure. Um, you've already given us some book recommendations. Uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, that's like the fundamentals of, <laughs> of, of for everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, But do you have any other uh, books you can recommend to the listeners? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, um, I've uh, recently, I just finished The Last Lecture by uh, Randy Posh. And that, was, that one's really good because it starts to, it helped me to just evaluate, you know, what's important in life. So, you know, a lot of times um, our income and our net worths are tied to our identities. So, but, you know, what, what's really important in life is really the meaning that we give to it and the relationships that we cultivate and um, just how we how we grow and experience life. So, and I know, you know, in, a, in the, you know, USA is, you know, capitalistic. So, you know, we're always focused on the, uh, the bottom line, you know, making the dollar and things like that. But in the end, at the end of it, it's like, it's really going to be more about the intangible experiences. So that was one. Um, I really like uh, authors, uh, Ben Mesrick. He's, he's written things like um, uh, the, uh, the MIT team uh, that took out uh, Vegas, the blackjack team. Um, he's got a lot of good books as well. Just uh, Michael Crichton, Stephen King, um, any sort of, uh, oh, I've also, I finished the um, Lord of the Rings as well. So all of those are really good books. Those are very varied genres. You are an interesting <laughs> fella. <laughs> so, uh, do you do you take on clients directly? Do you work with individual docs? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, if uh, most of the time, uh, like uh, I do, um, I have a uh, program where it's uh, thirty minute and then one hour. And then, uh, you know, if I think things are going to work out, you know, I can extend it. Um, I do this uh, in in addition, you know, every client that, you know, comes on, I send them uh, free copies of my books. And um, I'm also um, giving them uh, free access to my online course as well. And, uh, you know, I actually, and I'm also uh, having an upcoming seminar on uh, two genres. One is TEDx and then also getting in on stock. So I've got a lot of bundled package deals um, for the docs as well. Um, so yeah, they can reach out to me. I'm very um, active on social media, um, which will be in the show notes and uh, they can email me as well. So Great. Yeah, I'll put all that stuff in the show notes for the listeners. Um, do you uh, want to talk about your books at all? Yeah, definitely. Um, my, uh, my first book is my autobiography and it was in its, um, 
essentially tells my story just growing up. Uh, growing up, I was always an outsider, so I think my contrarian thinking has really helped me you know, flourish during these times. And then uh, it just talks a little bit about the different uh, options for physicians that are looking into uh, making a career transition. So, and I have to put a caveat because, you know, some physicians think it's like a recipe um, for success, but what it is, it's more of a autobiography and it's supposed to be more inspirational and motivational. And it's, and it has like my own life story sprinkled in to give the reader a, a sense of different ideas that they can pursue. So, um, and it's really for, very out of the box entrepreneurial minded um, physicians. So, you know, uh, sometimes physicians, you know, don't resonate with it. But so that's why I put in that caveat. My next three books, uh, one is folk talking about how I got my financial freedom through stocks and options. Um, and that's more of like a niche specific book. Um, and then I have one book on uh, how I got into consulting, how to set up your business you know, the pitfalls, you know, the nuts and bolts and things like that. So that's been really popular as well. And then my last book is also niche as well. It's uh, how to generate income as a writer and how to use writing to uh, build and uh, expand your brand and expand your reach. Cool. Those, yeah, those sound really good. I'll have to check them out myself. Um, so uh, what's next on the horizon? You said you had a TEDx talk coming up. Yeah, uh, TEDx talk. Uh, I have a couple of uh, projects coming up later in the year. Um, and then uh, just I have a, a virtual seminar on be how to become a TEDx speaker, um, You know how to submit your idea, your video, um, the advantage of using speaking to enhance your brand. And then um, I've also launched this uh, online group coaching course uh, in, uh, on how to get in on stocks. I had uh, back in, uh, I think, the end of March when the market was at the lows, I had a lot of people sign up for that. Um, I may launch it again once the market um, drops more, so we'll have to see about that. And then uh, I'm also uh, working on this, uh, this travel hack where I'm – trying to put all of my companies and businesses on automation and autopilot and see uh, if I can run my business from a low cost of living um, international country and uh, just enjoy the same quality of life and, uh, you know, for a lower cost. So I'm looking into, uh, you know, Belize, Colombia, Southeast Asia and the places like that. Cool. Oh, yeah. That sounds uh, like a dream for them. <laughs> But, uh, so, uh, Christopher, if you had just a single piece of advice to give to, um, let's say, late resident or within the first few years of um, uh, attending, attending hood, I guess you'd call it, uh -huh. um, uh, for what, what would that be uh, in financial matters if just, just one single piece of advice? Uh, just save, save more than you earn um, and invest, invest the money. D so don't spend the money on consumption, but spend it on like uh, investing in like real estate, you know, stocks. Those are the two simplest things and just, uh, just save more than you earn and, um, you know, live below your means. So that's, that's the one piece of advice. Well, that's uh, wonderful advice that I think uh, more of us need to need to think about, um, but uh, great. So, Dr. Liu, I want to thank you again for, uh, for coming on the show. I think you've uh, given our listeners quite a bit of great information to, to think about. And um, I will encourage everyone to check out your books and all your programs because I think you have a lot of very valuable content out there. And uh, you certainly made it yourself. So you're living it. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I really enjoyed my time on the show. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Awesome.